Hi, welcome to Nevada Trails. I'm Kat Simmons, and I'm so excited to have Jackie Chandler here as my guest today. She's the executive director for the Sustainable Tahoe um, program, and she has wonderful information about her program and the expo that's coming up. But I am so fascinated by you. I mean, I've known you for a few years. I stopped into that video once yep. with Rachel. And um, I, I'm, I would like to just know just a little quick background about how Sustainable Tahoe came to be. I mean, how, was it your brainchild? Or? Well, I did when I moved up here from, I grew up in Santa Barbara, and mm -hmm. then I ended up in Livermore, married the guy that um, designed the computer that simulates nuclear weapon testing so we don't have to blow up Nevada. Wow. And that didn't work out too good because I was a fashion designer from Santa Barbara, so it was uh -huh. sort of the artist and the scientist. Anyway, so the marriage fell apart and a job ended up moving me up to Tahoe. Uh -huh. And when I first came up here, I've been a visitor before and I hadn't really cared for the place. Traffic, noise, squaw, it didn't, didn't really gel with me and right. I come from Santa Barbara so I know where all the cool places are. So even though that's a big destination, I didn't get caught up in that because I knew where to go. Right. Tahoe, I didn't know where to go, didn't like it. When a job moved me up, I went, ugh. Tahoe. And I know, really. Was that the North Shore? Did North you move Shore. up to Incline? I moved up to Incline. Yeah. But see, I had never seen Incline on my visitor experiences. So when I got there, and that was where the job was, and they were really working on me to talk me into coming to Nevada and Tahoe, two places I wasn't sure about. Right. And so anyway, I did it. My life changed. I fell in love with this lake. And for the first five years, I kept thinking, who is taking care of this place? <laughs> so I went to all the groups that I could, the league, yeah. the Bicycle Coalition, I became Sierra one of the co-founders, all of them. Yeah. And I tried to think, who who's doing it? And it finally occurred to me two things. One, uh, we are. <laughs> we're responsible if we're living up there. Right. And the second one was that these people aren't talking to each other. There's no real circle of clarity. I would say, I would hear one group, I'd hear another group, and have you talked to that other group? Mm -hmm. And then I'd find out some were suing each other, and there was a lot of disconnect. So I thought, we need a circle of clarity. Mm -hmm. And so one by one, one day, a friend of mine, Dennis Oliver, who used to work at the TRPA, we were making a, we were just, okay, amusingly talking about the boat show, the only boat show in Tahoe, which is coming up, which is a concourse, which is a vintage show. Oh, cool. And we thought, wow, given how this place is a, canary in the coal mine for clean water for the world, where's the green boat shell? Speaking of clarity, yeah. Right. And so that led to calling for a circle of clarity, which evolved into Sustainable Tahoe, which evolved into a mission that a lot of locals had the same thoughts. Mm -hmm. Where's the ferry? Where's the monorail? You know, why are we continuing a 1960 menu of two seasons and four activities, which is degrading the lake, and then paying $2.8 billion every 10 years to enroll over 200 organizations to clean up after this behavior. Why isn't anybody focused on shifting the behavior? And what shifts behavior making something cool? How can we make conservation cool? Mm -hmm. And so from that we thought, let's call out to the world and have this beautiful lake be a global stage of watershed stewardship and ask the top technology people in the world to come and put their water technology, their boats on the water as a, as a fashion show of the top world protecting vessels, clean water technology. This should be the Davos, the Hollywood, the, the Silicon Valley, if you were, for clean water technology. So while we're planning this event and bringing people together that it became the organization Sustainable Tahoe, we realized, well, while they're waiting to test drive the boats to see who's, who can raise the watermark the highest, mm -hmm. what are they going to do on the land? And then that connected to the geotourism. I had been introduced to geotourism. What is geotourism? Well, I, I don't mean to be ignorant, but I am. Okay, remember City Slickers with Billy Crystal? Yes, I okay. know that. Remember he paid all that money to go out to a dude ranch in New Mexico? Yes. He was part of the culture, yes. the heritage, the local workload, which is unique to him because okay. it's not happening in New York, right? Right. So it's where people go to a place and they have an experience that is unique to that area. He did cowboy work and his life was transformed. Be like if they could go see the bears. Exactly. So this is yeah. exactly geotourism. Okay. It's like if you've ever gone out to experience the bears and bear habitat. Mm -hmm. If you've ever gone on a kayak into a marshland with a biologist, if you've ever seen wild mustangs with a person that's trying to protect them. Taylor or Creek, what they do monitor there. Monitor a creek yes. with a scientist. That's geotourism. Okay. Connecting you so that you feel a part of this unique landscape. You don't come here for, you know, things you can get at home. Right. I mean, we have eat, sleep and shop, you know, we have places yeah. to see, but that's not why people come. But they will get hungry, tired, and inspired. And so if we yeah. host our water in a way that sustains it, mm -hmm. we will have long-term prosperity and water okay. clarity. And so geotourism is a strategy 
to make that happen in destinations. And it's a worldwide effort, and it made sense to me when I was going on all these meetings. Well, it, I saw the it definitely does because it personalizes the whole. I mean, you can come up and you can go gambling and you can go skiing right. and that's great. And you can go out on the MS Dixie. But you're talking about like a little deeper relationship with the earth, with the water, with the seasons, with the animals. Right. So that when people leave that place, they have, have it in their heart instead of just a receipt. Exactly. When they get home. That's okay. exactly it. Because it. when you connect to something, mm -hmm. you care. Yeah. When you plant that sugar When you nurture something, help, you fall in love with it. You fall in love <laughs> with it. And when you love it and you care, you share And yeah. then we can save this lake. We can change the world. And it's easy to do by making it fun. Well, that is that. So that how many years ago was that mm. that Sustainable Tahoe came around? Well, five years ago, I five got years. introduced to geotourism, and we became a five hundred one three official in two thousand eleven, just last year. But we formed up in two thousand nine. So. And how many people do you have that are involved <laughs> with the um, uh, Sustainable Tahoe program itself? Well, there's basically Sustainable Tahoe is a vision that we all share. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, anybody that wants this area to be sustainable and is leading by example in some way is part of this vision. Right. But the actual people doing the work, the core group of people, mm -hmm. there's probably a dozen of us, mm -hmm. and we're all volunteers. We're running on the fuel of passion. Mm -hmm. And then we have organizations that are partnering with us, and that's where the expo comes in. The okay. expo, we did it last year. It was our first one. I remember hearing all about this. Yeah, and we partner with the Tour de Tahoe because we think that's one of the most sustainable things you can do, ride your bike around the lake. Okay. And our goal in being on the same weekend with the Tour de Tahoe is to remove cars because our event has no cars. We move oh, people nice. by water taxi this is a little or dangerous shuttle. dangerous around the lake. I know. Yeah. And the... NDOT and Caltrans can't seem to close the road for this event. And so we think we'll just eliminate the cars by making it so cool to not drive on one day. And so last year, mm. when this program hit, we didn't have that much uh, marketing dollars. And people saw this bear. 60 it's people showed bear. up to go on a hike with bears. Yay. And Ann Bryant was inundated. And uh -huh. basically, here's the map to show what happens. And that's why I brought this larger map. Too, but last year, all these organizations, whether they're working on water, forest, history, or wildlife, each of them has a particular interest. Like I mentioned, the 200 organizations that are on preservation. So each of them hosted an activity, connected, we connected it with the transit that was available, and we added a free shuttle on the East Shore. So basically, people took a water shuttle from here a water taxi down to here. What got, exactly is a water taxi? A water taxi is, it is just a, it's a boat, boat that carries people and moves you from one end to the other. I mean, other. but is it, are, they, are they personal boats well, or they're per, barges? Or? Well, because right now we're just doing a demonstration of what could be. Right. We're doing a demonstration of an economical model that okay. will create prosperity. We're using what we have. So we just use boats that are out there. Okay. I had a, a friend that had a private boat, and he became the water taxi. And I had a friend that was a captain, and she captained the boat, Michelle. Oh, fun. And she was, they're both part of Sustainable Tahoe. So we took eight people from here down to here. They got in a kayak with a biologist, went through the upper Truckee Marsh, ate, learned where the marsh mint was, learned all the cool stuff, took a free shuttle back to here to a local party with all the Nevada breweries that donated their, their brew. And we had uh, Rachel Kay's Kitchen who did the cooking. God, she's amazing. Sounds like the coolest Chef. place to be ever. This was so cool at Sand Harbor with yeah. local music. And then they took a free shuttle home. So they right. circled the entire lake without a car and had an incredible experience. I remember, because last year you had a, a, a transit station on the other side of Kingsbury. So That's you were right. encouraging people to yep. just park their cars yep. and get in a shuttle. You had a shuttle bus. Right. We had a shuttle bus that was moving people around. So mm -hmm. this year we're doing things around the lake. Like if you wanted to go see the bears, you would have to be over where the bears are. But the difference is... Which is, where's the, where are the bears? The bears are over by Homewood. Okay, and so where Ann Bryan is. Be, yep, where Ann Bryan is. They take off at the Bear Lake. And then we're having the... Um, the bird, the bird watching, mm -hmm. there's bird, uh, bird nets over by Meeks Bay. Bird nets? Nets, where that's a Tahoe Institute for Natural Science. They're doing Okay, some you work said over net, there. and I was like, wait, wait, we can't have the birds well, in a net? That's well, not all wrong. They're, what they're doing is this is part, see <laughs> here, it's, an acronym. it's back to city slickers. Okay. These are what these cowboys do. These guys, right. But these guys are out there, instead of herding cows, they're out there researching the birds. Are their nests okay? Are they doing okay? So they have different ways of checking on them. So they put nets out to see, are they you know, is the is the family of birds all right out here? What are they eating? What are they missing? Is the ecosystem supporting them? Okay. So it's really a support 
it's like how they tag bears and then right. they track them. Are they getting enough food? Okay. So you get to go out with the scientists mm -hmm. and see what their daily job is, which to them might be just their job, but to a visitor and even locals, fascinating. Right. And so this is our, our card um, this year. And the reason we have this is that the Karen, you know, when you see a bunch of stacked rocks, it means this is the way a Karen is... I make those, and I never right. knew why. Okay. Right. It's, it because I saw somebody else do it. I thought I must be communicating with whoever else, whoever else is making those rocks. So this is symbolic of a we're guiding. We're oh, guiding you this on way. multiple adventures this okay. way so you won't get lost. And these are tracks, and they leave no footprint. They're low carbon. So wow. everything you do will be guided. And notice how well it blends with Tahoe because... Tahoe looks better it's beautiful. naked. Tahoe looks better naked. It does. It really doesn't look that much you better with all that. the stuff okay. we put on it. And so we're taking you into the heart of Tahoe. And some of the things you'll do will be see submarine views from uh, what's under the bottom of the lake. Have submarine you ever wondered about Submarine views? Yeah, submarine views. There's Maybe a, I can find that ring I lost that's all those right. years ago. Scott Cassell is uh, the underwater Voyager project. Really? He's up here for a okay. month testing, doing a lot of research in the lake. And so he's offered to be one of our tracks. We call them adventure tracks because we're taking one, two, three activities, linking it with transit and a local lunch. Right. And that will be a track. But we have to um, take a quick break. But can you tell, is there a way people can get like on a mailing list or go to a website yes. that they can find out all this information? If so you go to www tahoeexpo.com you'll see the different tracks we have. And there is capacity. There's, these are intimate experiences. So it's only a couple of maybe 25 to 60 people on a track. And Great. you can sign up there and register. Great. Thank you so much. We'll be back in just a minute. Thank you.
Hi, welcome back to Nevada Trails. I'm Kat Simmons, still here with Jackie Chandler, learning all kinds of great things about the Sustainable Tahoe and the amazing event that was birthed out of it, which is coming up September 8th and 9th. And I'm understanding from Jackie, this is not a festival. The Tahoe um, Summit is not a festival. It's not, it's not the summit, it's the expo, the, the expo. Tahoe Expo. Right. It is a, you've called it a demonstration. What does that exactly mean? It's a demonstration of the organizations and the businesses that are leading by example in sustainability. And it's a demonstration of how we as a region, I mean, not just Tahoe, everybody that shares the water all the way to Pyramid Lake, if we collaborate and work together, we can create economic prosperity for four seasons without importing anything. We have everything we need right here that is unique to us and important to the visitors, and it's all the things that we love and care about. When I, I was talking to Mount Blue yesterday, and they were talking about their, their strategy for a hotel, maybe if they bring in this act, this act, and I was asking the woman that was the marketing director previous, what do you love to do? She said, oh, I like to kayak. Where, why aren't you promoting that? Right. You know, why, why don't we promote the things that are here, the bears, the squirrels? I had a woman come visit me from Hong Kong. She wanted to photograph squirrels. Mm-hmm. I didn't even believe her. We are really dissing on what is so valuable. Pine cones, you see people pick them up. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the things, guiding people. Right. So it's a demonstration because we don't want it to be once a year. It's every year till it's every day. We want it to continue. We're building a new menu, a new brand for Tahoe that is four seasons of conservation, recreation, and education. Is together. that what you what you mean by the economic model? The economic model, exactly. Because people think if you can't put a fence and charge money, there's no money in it. Right. Well, the state of New York makes one point six billion a year annual revenue by people watching wildlife. And you know the bears aren't charging them to watch. Well, and they're doing that up in um, British yeah, Columbia. Yeah, with the with the grizzlies. With the grizzlies, making, we are on their menu, and they're making right. two million to kill them, but seventy million to load the camera. It's, yeah, so load your camera, not your gun. Right. Um, and this is where the big money is. And you know how much our region makes from wildlife viewing? Uh, <laughs> I think I put a couple dollars in Taylor Creek's box. Okay, well, but that's, that's that just would be a it. Tip. And we have our bears come down to <laughs> yeah. the Taylor Creek River in October, which is our dead season here. Right. And there's not one hotel that's putting that on their menu. That's crazy. Be, it's because, crazy. Yeah, People, because that's shoulder season. When right. you refer to shoulder season up at the lake, that just means basically you're in between snow and going to the beach. Exactly. When actually the richest, most amazing things <laughs> so are going cool. on during the dead season, because yes. I've been to Taylor Creek, and yeah. that is, we are very lucky to have that for people who don't know. It's by, which beach is it by? Down past Camp Richardson. Yes, yeah, uh, Pope and, Beach, Baldwin Beach, Pope. Camp Rich, right yeah. in there. And there's an underwater observatory, yep. and you can see trails. And, it's amazing, but to come down and see wildlife. To you see know, the bears eating on the salmon. Eating on the salmon. I mean, just to see the bears and to see them just, just walking around is, is yeah. magical. And, and this is something so many people want to do, and they don't have a clue how to do it. And you just don't want to wander off and do it by yourself. You want to be guided. And Anne Bryant and the Bear League have done such an incredible job, mm-hmm. and they're, they're just not on the radar. And when we bring more people in to understand what our challenges are, what is going on here, they'll connect. They'll be a part of what's happening. They'll feel it. It's, well, yeah, because it's what you don't understand, you fear, and what you fear, you kill, and that's why we have that's you know, why we so have many things like bears the bear being hunt. killed, and yeah. yeah, and then sadly, Nevada's first ever bear hunt, which is devastating to it's me. It's amazing. There's only a few hundred bears in the area will make them extinct, and yet we're throwing away money. There's right. so much more money in viewing those bears and viewing the mustangs and viewing the beautiful trees. And you had talked about before we went to break. Um, you talked about these tracks. Yes, um, I'm not a hundred percent. The, when that when the expo is going on, it's going on all the way around the lake. All around. How many like okay. I don't know what stations you would call it. Yeah, or no, places. we have about right now. There's about fifteen, maybe twenty, but fifteen tracks right now. Tracks. And the tracks are, for instance, we're having one that every track has an assembly point. So there's an assembly point right now at uh, Tahoe Marina if you want to do the early bird bear track. So you would get on a water taxi. The water taxi takes you over to Meeks Bay. And then from Meeks Bay, you take a walk with the biologist into seeing where the birds are through Meeks Bay in the meadow. Then you're taken by shuttle over to Obixers, uh, Obixers, where you're going to have a lunch, which is locally sourced from the food over in Carson and the beef. 
and then, or if you're vegetarian, then you're going to walk up to Homewood and you're going to go on a hike with Anne in the Bear League into Bear Habitat, and you'll be able to see their day beds, their tracks. Do you have to get on a waiting list for that? I mean, like, if I really Isn't wanted that to amazing? do that, how can I make sure that I get to do that? Well, you go to TahoeExpo.com and under Tahoe, Tahoe Adventure Tracks, you'll see the tracks. It'll detail your sign day. Up list. Everything is from nine to three, and each track has a capacity. So you sign and register, and there's a participation fee, but it's way less than what these cost. Uh, it's probably right. around $25 to $75 are the participation fees. Mm -hmm. And then each track, because it's going to be a, a lot of money to get all these pieces together, it includes everything. First of all, includes your lunch, your transit, all the guiding, the take-home water bottle and some things you're going to be taking home, the, the games, the way you participate. It goes from 9 to 3 or 8, if they're the early bird one, may start 8 to 2, something right. like that. And then we look for uh, commercial sponsors. And here's why. So we build the track, and then part of the demonstration is having a local resort pay for what it costs to do that track. Because then they're tied into this value system. They're saying, we support these types of activities. Exactly. And then we Bring promote everybody them into it. to the visitors on the track. Mm -hmm. And then the visitors pay a subsidizing, you know, it's subsidized. So they pay a little bit to help too and support the whole effort. And then afterwards, the lines start forming. And of course, these tracks are going to fill up really fast. I mean, we can only, the capacity is only maybe five or 600 people for the total, for the total event. And we're going all the way out to Pyramid Lake, right? But that's part of the demonstration. Because we want lines to form. People go, hey, I didn't get on that track, or you could only do one. I didn't get to do the submarine track, or I didn't get to do the Mustang track. I want to track. do that one, too. I know. It's hard to pick. I don't want to do that one. It's hard to pick. So we could, we, could, we could replace the word track with activity. Well, there are multiple really? activities. That's why we call them a track. Oh, it's activities like, within the track. Right. There's okay. activity one, activity two, activity three. There's a lunch. There's water taxis. There's shuttles. Okay. There's all these things together. Because it's a little bit of a foreign term for me. So right. now I'm, I'm A track is a, a, you know, a whole a, a combination okay. of activities And there's going to be 15 different ones. 15 different ones that we have right now. Like the Nature Conservancy has Mustang Valley. They've just completed a restoration project on the Truckee River and a bike lane and an amphitheater. Who knew? So Gosh. we're going to have basket weaving you'll learn how to make a, a, a coil that you'll learn how to weave from the ecosystem of the land of the washa weavers as you know are are famous for that and oh my so god that smells why so good. not participate you know weave yourself into the story real. yep that is so lovely and so this is how it's a demonstration when the resorts get into this habit of supporting putting their money behind this type of guiding mm -hmm. and people want more of this mm -hmm. why stop I mean, this is shoulder season. There, yeah, keep right. it going. Everything we're, we're showcasing could be perfect for shoulder season. Right. We want to keep it going, and then we can create more people giving more reasons to stay longer, return sooner, mm -hmm. and migrate stories. And then the businesses, there right now, the resorts up in Tahoe, they're discounting 40% in shoulder season. That's so great. I said, what if you could take even half of that 40%, throw it over to pay for this kind of guiding, so that visitors are guided in ways that don't destroy. So when their grand, great grandchildren come back, it's still the amazing place it is. Because mm. at business, the, the commercial core of our area wants people to eat, sleep, and shop. That's all there is. Right. That's all the money. You know, restaurants, but eat, sleep, and shop. So we can get people very hungry, tired, and inspired going on kayaking, hiking, biking, right. it, with guides, learning about the culture, the heritage making baskets, doing crafts, making shoes, swimming, diving, taking submarines. It's like a, a, a huge day at camp. It's like a huge day at camp. And exactly. it's like enrichment tourism. It's like instead of just That's coming right. and leaving money, you come and you learn, you take a piece of Lake Tahoe home in your heart, and you want to protect her. We all know Lake Tahoe's a her, That's right? It. That's it. She, she's a jewel of the Sierra. That's exactly it. She's a jewel. That's exactly it. So, so we create consciousness That's right. with this type of activity. With the water. Right. With the water. And we also have Sand Harbor, the Shakespeare stage. You know that area? Yes, I do. We're going to maybe have um, a little, uh, we're going to do something from the No Bear Hunt organization in there. We're hoping to do that on Sunday. I've been talking Sunday. with... September um, 9th. Se September 9th, right. Yeah. We have it all day Sunday. This, uh, Shakespeare has been incredibly generous in Nevada mm -hmm. State Parks in allowing us to use their beautiful stage. It's so right. sacred. It's such a temple. And we always have opened with Washoe ceremonies. And this year we're thinking of uh, there's a sacred bear dance. We're looking at talking to some of the tribes to see if there's a possibility to get something there. The, the, the bear hunt, unfortunately, starts the week after the expo. And we're hoping to use this opportunity at yeah. the stage. Yeah. As I know, we did that 
Uh, last year, I organized the blessing of the bears the week before the hunt. It was so it was a very sad time for us. So if we can come together and, and um, just pay homage and do a little blessing for them that way and make people really aware of what's going on and why and yeah. do some outreach. Um, and not only for the bear hunt, but just all the, the management issues going on up at the lake, too. It just exactly. need a lot of, uh, a lot of community, um, you know awareness and support for for the bears because they're certainly such a, an local. amazing part of what Lake Tahoe's about and uh to yeah to um we moved into their neighborhood and we yeah, have if you don't a, like bears in your backyard don't move into theirs yeah <laughs> so, so that's we want to have respect say. and so we're looking for people to sponsor and right. help us to create this demonstration and if somebody has it in their heart to do something amazing with Santa Harbor and would like to support this effort of what you're talking about with the Bear League right. and they want to come forward and help sponsor this, it would be great because most of the tracks, um, all the tracks on Saturday are in the basin okay. and only Sunday because of the bike ride, the bike the west. The bike ride's the on Sunday the 9th. Okay. So we want to make sure that whatever we do at Sand Harbor, you will only be able to access it with water, taxi, and shuttle. And so you we will, will not be driving your you will SUV. not be driving. So tell people how, because okay. we all do love our lake. And we're so blessed to live so close. People come from all over the world. How can people help you help the lake with this program? What well, can they do? How can they donate? Definitely it's going to take a willing watershed. Uh, donate with your time and your actions. If you have ideas for an activity that you would like to see exposed in the expo, please contact us at TahoeExpo.com. There's ways to do that. And you can also call 298-2333. And, and what area code is that? 775. Okay, say that one more time. 775. 775- Two nine eight two three three three, twenty three thirty three, and also we have a new donation program. This is, yeah, this is cool. This is peace for the planet, and this is a proclamation. This woman Laura has done this on a global level, and it's to help uh, give money to those that are giving. And for twenty dollars, you get a proclamation, and you donate uh, funds so that your commitment of donating the money, along with getting a proclamation that shows that you are definitely your intention is about creating peace. And as Julia Butterfly said, there can be no peace on earth till there is peace with the earth, and that oh, is so what true. Um, be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. because it really is up to us for all the future generations to take care of. Lake Tahoe. Jackie, exactly. thank you so much for being here today and for um, sharing with us about the expo and about your wonderful organization. And I really, I'm so grateful to you for what you have done. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. you so much. Uh, we'll see you next time on Nevada Trails. My name is Kat Simmons.